20 weirdest courtroom moments of all time. Now, Zoom meetings can get pretty awkward sometimes, but instead of forgetting to put our pants on or leaving the mic on while cussing out the professor, Nathaniel Saxton, who was charged with possession of drug paraphernalia, forgot something vital, changing his Zoom username. Your name's not but 3000, you yo-ho. Logging into my court with that as your screen name. With the entire online court expecting an average run-of-the-mill hearing, the judge notices that the defendant Saxton doesn't have his name on, but the nickname ButtEffa3000. What kind of idiot logs into court like that? Nathaniel seemingly had no idea that this was going on. I don't believe that I typed anything like that in. I'll put you in the waiting room. You can sit in limbo for a while and think about what you call yourself online. And ultimately, Saxton apologized. And it turned out his sister had set up the account for him. He ended up paying a $200 fine. Now, embarrassing yourself in front of the judge is dumb, but missing a court date is even dumber. And this man, Herbert Bristol, was going to stop at nothing to make his hearing for drunk driving. But he took it a bit too seriously, and literally drove right through the courthouse at night. If there was any doubt about his drunk driving charges, there sure isn't any now. What's worse than a drunk driver, though? A Karen. Karens freaking out in the supermarket is one thing, but doing it in court gets them immediate, sweet justice. Personal life is no, no. your business, John. It has nothing to do with Miss Hardwick. Boys. This particular Karen, Melissa Hardwick, must have thought the judge messed up her sandwich as she raised her voice and started cursing. I haven't done anything to this court. I haven't done anything to okay. him. She will be arrested for contempt in court. Make... When the judge warns her about getting contempt in court, she goes from Karen to feral Karen and pounces right at the judge. Ironically, she was in court in the first place for domestic abuse. Hardwick received five years of probation and mandatory mental health evaluation. Now, while some get in trouble for losing control, others have everything planned out, like Calvin Lloyd Griffith, who was arrested for the unspeakable act of stealing a teacher's car. In Miami-Dade court, Calvin was that one guy in the meeting who would not stop talking, and so the judge did what most of us wish we had the power to do in some gatherings, and just muted him. This didn't stop Calvin, however, who kept talking even if no one could hear him. Desperate for attention, he channeled his inner middle school class clown and started twerking right in front of the judge. Now we can't deny he's got some moves, but the judge was definitely not impressed with the look on her face that implied she wanted to give him the death penalty. Piece of advice though, Calvin. With moves like that, you really don't want to drop the soap in prison. You know who probably did dance though? This married couple. Until they ended up in court. When you say your wedding vows, you promise to stick together through thick and thin. But for this wife, a speeding ticket is where she drew the line. My wonderful husband. Oh. I got the ticket. He was driving my car. Oh. I'm not guilty. Oh. He is. <laughs> guilty. No, no, I understand that. <clears throat> I said, you came here today to tell me he's guilty. So the first thing you did was throw him under the bus. <laughs> Ultimately, though, the judge decided to dismiss the charges, seeing that the husband was only a tenth of a second past the limit. You go through this every day? <laughs> yes, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> that is dismissed. Thank you, Still, you have to admire some people's confidence, such as the next defendant, Jeremy Shaw, who wanted to represent himself in court after a list of charges longer than his prospective future after jail release. Jeremy contributed a lot to the world. First degree home invasion, car theft, identity theft, theft from a building, possession of controlled substances, and seven misdemeanor theft charges. Clearly, he must be innocent, right? I'd like to represent myself then, Your Honor. Well, I would strongly urge you not to do that. At least that's what he thought, as he kept heckling the very patient judge in court when he chose to represent himself. As long as I can remember. That's your opinion. I don't, I don't buy your opinion. Um, I'm a better lawyer than you. In the end, he literally gets so angry and throws a table. I don't know how that helps him, but they sure don't learn about that in law school. Speaking of the law, the justice system can sometimes be skewed, and there's nothing better than a judge who knows to call out the system. This is what happened when a woman was arrested for shoplifting and held for three days. But shockingly, the prison denied her pants and hygiene products. The jail would also refuse to give her pants and any kind of hygiene products that she needed. 
We know prisons can be rough, but seriously, you'd think they'd want to avoid a lawsuit. This <laughs> is outrageous. Is this for real? I'm sorry. This is going to take a little bit. I'm actually calling to talk to you, Director Bolton, or anyone uh, who can come to my courtroom and tell me why there is a defendant, a female defendant, standing in front of me with no pants on. Extreme prisons like that are a common thing somewhere else, though. Russia. Like most things in Russia, courts are extreme. This one hearing of Leonid Greyesa is a prime example. This 18-year-old was arrested for stabbing his sister at the order of Satan. Well, that certainly wasn't in the book of Genesis. And to keep this spawn of hell away from everyone, they placed him in a glass box, which he then proceeded to escape out of, leading to a hysterical game of the cops trying their hardest not to let him escape into the ceiling. This marijuana happy offender decided to take the court stage as a chance to deliver a rousing inspirational speech about free drug use. 20 year old Spencer Boston was in court for a simple charge of marijuana possession when he decided to prove to the entire court that he is, in fact, guilty. Hey, hey, hey! We the people deserve better! Pleading innocence doesn't always work, so why not try to sing the judge into dismissal? Hello there, you're on her. I wanna say I'm sorry. That's what Brian Taylor thought when he broke out in Adele's Sorry after receiving three years for threatening a man with a gun. They say theater kids are pretty easy to spot, but it seems like some of them grow up to become criminals. You're on her, I wanna say I'm sorry for the things I've done. We can't blame Brian for trying, since breaking out into song usually works in Disney movies, but pressing a gun against a man's stomach isn't really the work of fairy tales, and he's still got his jail time. If Brian's plan was to elicit sympathy, there's another trick that could do that easily. A little kid. Taking your kid anywhere can be embarrassing but especially when it's a court and the whole thing is filmed for a show. This little buddy was waiting for his dad to finish his $25 parking ticket charge when the judge decided to give him a little toy, his gavel. Want to play with that, look. The cute little kid kept playing with his gavel, but he must not be a fan of the justice system as he broke it, making everyone laugh. Judge, I've had that 150 years. He's had it about two seconds and broke it. <laughs> Speaking of cute, cute girls not being the brightest is a bit of an unfair stereotype. <laughs> it's not a joke, you know, we're not, we not in a club now. But sometimes it's just too accurate, because this real-life Harley Quinn couldn't distinguish a courthouse from a hair salon. <laughs> I own a lot of jewelry, all right, as well as Go ahead. a car. Well, how, 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 how much you, would you say your jewelry is worth? <laughs> well, it's not a joke, you know. We are not in, we are not in a club now. Okay, but if we don't, hey, well, you see, you know, we are not in, a, we are not in a club. Be serious about it. Upon giving his sentence, the girl, Penelope Soto, laughed it off and left. Adios. <laughs> Come back, ma'am. Come back. So the judge called her back twice with high bonds, which she really didn't like, and flipped him on the third. Come one would be 10,000. Are you serious? I am serious. Adios. Come back again. Come back again. I believe I heard you saying to... I, I believe you... Did you say... Did you say that? Yes, sir. Oh, you did say that? I find you in direct criminal contempt, 30 days in the county jail. One thing that all these defendants had in common, however, was that there was no doubt about their crimes. But there's nothing better than admitting when you're wrong, even if it's at court. I'm wasting your time. I'm not even going to bother. <laughs> I'm serious. This lovely lady ran two red lights and wasn't going to waste hers or anyone's time to get dismissed. 
Once the judge told her to watch the clip of her violation. No, I want to see them all now. <laughs> <laughs> Now I want to see everybody. You want to see everything, right? She knew she was guilty and made sure he knew it. I'm going to ask you again. When you first came here, I said, you want to see them? You said, I don't want to see anything. I'm guilty. <laughs> I'm guilty. I don't want to look at anything. Because I didn't want to take up time. I wanted to get out of here. I'm going to ask you again. Do you want to see them? No. Yes, from now on, I would want to see them. You want to see everything? Thank you. Right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck. Eventually, she agreed to pay a reduced fine of $85. On the opposite end of the taking responsibility spectrum, though, we've all tried to play the sympathy card with our mums by pretending to be sick, but faking a sore throat is different from faking a whole heart attack in court. And that's exactly what Keeson Wilkins tried and miserably failed to do during a retrial for his 42 years sentencing for assault and weapon possession. Wilkins must have thought that a heart attack would get him a reduced sentence. It would reflect that the defendant is slouching over to the side and acts like he's sleeping. But it seems like he's a better criminal than he is an actor, since nobody bought what he was trying to do. Oh, a remarkable uh, change. The whole charade definitely didn't work, and he still served his 42-year sentence. Nobody knows embarrassing public freakouts more than a Karen, though. And this next one... Karen Stevens got the scolding of a lifetime. I'm sorry, Anna's what? What ensued was a classic Karen versus person of authority battle, but the judge was simply too powerful for this defendant. How can you ask to sanction someone when you haven't even been served? That's the point. He Stevens, do not, do not interrupt me when I'm speaking, ma'am. Still, the defendant kept arguing and talking back until the judge went off on threatening to hold her in contempt until she just made her pay her sanctions outside the courtroom. Ms. Stevens, I highly suggest that you just exit my courtroom and go, go pay the sanctions before I find you in contempt. You never know where you can find love, but it's probably not going to be in an online court hearing when you're being charged for an attempted break-in. I do, I do. But Demetrius Lewis still had to shoot his shot and flirt with the judge. You're gorgeous. Thank, thank you, Mr. I Lewis. All right, Mr. All right, Mr. Lewis, flattery will get you everywhere, but maybe not here. Lewis was no Prince Charming, however, and the judge couldn't take him seriously, smoothly putting him off and sticking with the charges and a $5,000 bond. The, the court finds probable cause on count one, burglary occupied dwelling unarmed, count two, possession of MDMA ecstasy. Correct us if we're wrong, but it's probably a bad idea as a student to argue with someone who'd been practicing the profession longer than you've even been alive. Testify to oh, about notice me, is I do believe there was talks about application. Exactly. I'm reading your words, right? Exactly. But this Ivy League ray of confidence got it the hard way when he mockingly told the judge that her ruling is her opinion. And what ensued was a scorched earth beatdown that would have had the biggest, toughest guys in tears. That's your opinion. No, wow. that's my ruling, pal. And let me tell you something, Mr. University of Miami Law School. I taught at UM for many, many years, and you right now are embarrassing us. You do not show that kind of disrespect, okay? If you don't like what the judge is doing, then you take it to the next forum. But you do not sit here and say, that's your opinion like a baby when a judge rules against, don't even utter another word. And if you think that this kind of petulance and babiness on your part to turn around and tell a judge who you disagree with, well, that's your opinion, is going to get you anywhere, you are sorely mistaken. If there's nothing you should have learned in the last two years as a law student, there's something you should have learned as a human growing up that you do not show that kind of disrespect. You don't like it, take it to the hallway. <laughs> Verdict for the plaintiff, $450 and court costs. If we were him, we just drop out and send his resume to the nearest fast food joint, where he'd probably do a bit better. At least all of this was still somewhat realistic, because in the normal world, robbing a bank is illegal. I'm talking about the enactment clause under our constitution, okay. right. Michigan constitution. But this next defendant comes from the bizarro world, where apparently it isn't. After stealing from a bank, Dale Morris had the confidence of a superhero, telling the judge that what he did wasn't illegal. Somehow at least. Yes, so uh, what you're telling me is that regardless to what, you're going to bend the Constitution to your, to your understanding. Morris kept flouting the Constitution and a whole bunch of nonsense that would make a C student who'd BS'd his way through an essay proud to the point where the judge was holding back laughter. But while Dale made the judge's blood boil, 
everyone's favorite judge, Frank Caprio, got it a little bit easier with his next defendant. A mother has the hardest job in the world. But what happens when her own kid wants her to spend five days in jail for speeding? Katie, who are these kids? Where'd you find them? Do you rent these kids outside? Katie Wallace must have regretted bringing her army of five kids with her to court. After only speeding with an extra one mile over the limit, Judge Frank Caprio let Katie's son Alex be the judge. But Alex was not as merciful. Is your mother guilty or not guilty? Not. Not. <laughs> Declaring his mom not guilty, but that she would instead be fined money and spend five days in jail, cracking up the entire court. Should we fine her some money or should we let her go for nothing? Yes. Yes what? Yes money. Yes money. <laughs> How about $35 court cost? Yes. How about five days in jail? Yes. <laughs> but eventually banging the gavel and dismissing the case. The case dismissed. Take case dismissed. <laughs> We've already proven that singing in court doesn't really get you anywhere, but what about rapping? Brandon Justice can answer that question. And I don't even know, but everybody wants to do exactly what they tell me that to do. The judge summoned the spirit of everyone's favorite teacher, who liked to put kids on the spot and force justice to start rapping. But you're drinking so much you forgot, so you remember the verse now? Uh, no, I, Let's hear it. Let me I, hear it. It might help you, it might not. This is me up in my mind, suddenly secluded. This is me giving time, everything's inclusive. And I don't even know, but everybody wants to do exactly what they tell me that to do. Uh, you know, I don't know. I'm in like a situation where I don't want to rap. <laughs> but then he blew everyone's minds when he started rapping back, reducing the entire court to laughter. Then a man beat up women. And you can listen to this without fail. If you don't raise bail, you're going to stay in jail. <laughs> But Justice's rapping skills couldn't get him out of a $1,500 fine.